What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus package, fourth stimulus check update, daily news, everything going on here in our country, in Washington, D.C., with our economy, money, investing, the stock market, everything you need to know about on a daily basis. If you're new to our YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new videos. New videos come out every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you find these videos helpful, don't forget to hit the like button for us down below. Also in this video, I'm going to tell you how some people are going to be able to receive up to $10,000 in stimulus money. So definitely make sure to watch all the way to the end so you can find out about that as well. Happy New Year's. Hope that a 2022 New Year is a lot better to all of us and we can finally get this country on the right track and get this virus under control. Speaking of that, there was some concern that New York City Times Square celebration might not go on. But New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio says that the Times Square celebration is moving forward despite the Omicron surge. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio says today, quote, We want to show that we're moving forward and we want to show the world that New York City is fighting our way through this. While spectators were not permitted at last year's celebration, the mayor's office announced last week that the event to ring in 2022 would allow attendees but would be majorly scaled back and only 15,000 attendees will be permitted and visitors cannot enter until 3 p.m. The mayor said, we've got to send a message to the world that New York City is open and that we're doubling down on vaccinations. New York State's data showed that more than 67,000 people tested positive for the virus on Tuesday alone as cases across the country have hit record high. Now note that New York City is requiring the attendees who are actually allowed to gather in Times Square that they have to, number one, be vaccinated. They have to, number two, wear a mask. And they have to, number three, social distance. So first of all, there's going to be a significant amount less people, approximately only 15,000 people. Number two, they have to show proof of vaccination. Number three, they have to wear a mask. And number four, they're going to have to social distance. So we're not going to have anywhere near the, you know, mass amounts of hundreds of thousands of people uh, crammed in there, you know, just crowds and crowds and crowds of people. I don't know how they're going to do the whole social distancing thing there, um, but it'll be interesting to see here. Now, this is happening as... Other major cities across the world are canceling their New Year's Eve parties across the world. So it's just kind of a, you know, government by government basis here. Uh, New York City is deciding to do theirs. The cities that are canceling some or all of their events are Athens, Greece, Atlanta, Georgia, Berlin, Edinburgh, London, New Delhi, Paris, France, Rome, Bangkok, Cape Town, Chicago, Dubai, Las Vegas, Rio de Janeiro, Sydney, Taipei, and possibly others across the United or across the world. Yeah, so uh, ringing in the new year will still be an in an interesting one here. But it's, it's kind of weird. It's um. You know, if I mentioned it in the other episode, um, I, on the 26th, the day after Christmas, we tried to get a restaurant reservation and couldn't even get a restaurant reservation uh, on New Year's Eve. They were just sold out. We couldn't even, we called a couple restaurants and there wasn't even availability. <laughs> so, uh, and we don't even go out to eat very often. I I can't even remember the last time we went out to eat. It was um, for my wife's birthday. So it, it, it's 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 kind of weird. So we're getting takeout. Um, we're just going to, it's not Chinese takeout, but we're going to just go to a restaurant and just 
they're going to make it and we're just going to take it home for New Year's Eve. Uh, but let me know what you're doing for New Year's Eve. It's, um, it's just a, it's a, it's not a normal year. That's for sure. That's for sure. Meanwhile, we broke the record again for new cases. Remember that the record previously was 300,000 new cases. If I can get it to show on the day here. Well, it doesn't want to cooperate today. The, the highest I can get it to show here on this graph is 280,000 cases. But the highest uh, previously was 300,000 cases. Um, well, we broke that three days in a row now. Yesterday, December 29th, 488,988 cases, almost 489,000 cases. Three days in a row here. So that's almost half a million cases. Yesterday, uh, we look at the day before, 380,000 new cases. And the day before that, 543,000 new cases. Wow. That is a lot. When we add those up, that's almost, I, I don't even know. That's, that's, I mean, we're nearing, that's almost 1.5 million cases in three days. Now, remember here that, and let me show you the deaths here, 2,100 yesterday. And yeah, so I'm, I, I, the day after Christmas, it's just weird that, that, that they just weren't reported. Um, so the 28th, 2,494. And yesterday, 20, 2,101. Seven day average is 1,543. Yeah, it's just. Uh, and look at this. Look at the seven day average here. It's over the high that we ever had, 301,000. So our seven-day moving average is higher than the, the, the highest we ever had in one day. So we're now averaging more than we ever had in a single day. Now, remember that these results that you're showing here are basically only from approved testing. Um, these are not from at-home tests. At-home tests don't get reported to the government, to the hospitals or anything. If you take an at-home test and you test positive, nobody knows about it. You take an at-home test, you're positive, nobody knows about that. It doesn't get reported to anybody. So how many people are taking at-home tests and are positive <laughs> and are in addition to that? Now, the other problem with that is the at-home tests based on new reports and studies and findings aren't even really that accurate. Check this out. Here we are from a Business Insider from yesterday, December 29th. Rapid virus tests are worse at detecting Omicron, the FDA says, citing new lab data. The other problem is, is that these at-home tests are sold out. All across the country, they're, they're sold out. They're hard to find. Not only are they sold out and hard to find, but they're expensive. They're like $20 to $30 a piece for like one box. The FDA says that rapid antigen tests appear less sensitive against the Omicron various, variant, citing early lab studies. Rapid tests are generally less accurate than PCR tests. And experts previously told Insider that rapid tests were still helpful if used properly. You could see here, rapid tests are generally less sensitive. Even before the Omicron variant emerged, rapid tests were known to be hit or miss. One review found that these tests were 58% accurate to those who didn't have symptoms and 72% accurate to those who did have symptoms, Insider previously reported. Timing of these tests is also crucial as it takes a couple of days for the virus to spread enough in the body for it to be picked up by a test. The best bet, according to available data, is to take several rapid tests over a few days and test hours, not days before mixing with others. The problem with this is taking several tests, one, that 
could cost a lot of money. Two, are you even able to get several tests if the stores are potentially sold out? <laughs> this is the kind of problem we're dealing with right now. Now, Dr. Fauci says that tests available availability will be greatly improved in January. That doesn't help us out right now. January is around the corner, but who knows when that will be. Will it be two, three, four weeks from now? And remember that the White House says that they're going to have 500 million, half a billion tests that they're going to start sending out here to us, to the people, um, through a government website that they're going to set up that has not been set up yet. They're going to send these out for free to the people here. And we're still waiting for them to do this. So this is, I mean, now, understandably, this is, I understand this is going to, this is a big undertaking to set up a website and send out 500 million of these. And I will keep you up to date when they do this. And as soon as they announce this, I will let you know what the website is, how to get them, and to get them for free. Because, I mean, hey, every test is 20 some dollars, even 30 some dollars at the store. So this is going to be an awesome thing to get here. So as soon as I see this, I will let you guys know how to get these for free um, from the... The, the government from the White House. So um, that'll be an awesome kind of little thing that they're doing here because, I mean, if you can get two of them or four of them, that's $50 or $100 you can get for free. And God knows we need them because it feels like almost everybody is, uh, is you know, potentially coming down with this about around now, right now. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, meanwhile, I have another state that is helping out with um, another stimulus provision here. It seems like every day I find uh, another article that a state is helping out with stimulus. So um, again, I, I don't get to decide how these states do this, but I will keep you updated as I find out more and more of these. So hey, the more help these states do, um, the better, right? So here is what I found here today. You can see the date on this is December 30th, literally today. Uh, so pretty awesome here. Final round of stimulus checks worth at least $10,000 being sent to help out with child care. You must apply by January, December 30th. Yeah. Cash strap Americans in Maryland will be sent stimulus grants worth at least $10,000 next year to help with child care. But bosses at the Maryland State Department of Education warn that applicants applications must be submitted by January 23rd. So if you're in the state of Maryland and um, you want to apply for this, you can get up to $10,000 next year to help with child care through the Maryland State Department of Education. And you must submit this application by January 23rd. Here's how to do it. $10,000 is amazing. Okay, more than $125 million in funding is being made available to help with child care programs in Maryland. Applications for the second and final round of the Child Care Stabilization Grants will open on January 3rd. So that's here in like four days, okay? Uh, write that down if you're in Maryland and you think this might apply to you. Child Care Stabilization Grants. More than $125 million in funding will be made available with these child care programs. Providers will receive a base grant of $10,000, according to MSDE. Eligible child care providers could receive additional grants. It follows the first round of grants that were sent to residents in October. Providers that were awarded grants in the first round are encouraged to apply again. State Superintendent of Schools Mohammed Choudhury, MSDE, recognizes the critical role of child care provider community plays in early childhood care and education and challenges hardships they face during the pandemic. Our providers need emergency grant resources now. 
We want our providers to know when we say that we're here for them, we meet it. We mean it. We intend that this funding round matches action with words. It's expected that all these payments will have been processed by March 4th. Maryland is not the only state that is offering Americans with a helping hand. Thousands of Californians will receive payments worth up to $1,100 in the coming week and Governor Gavin Newsom's Golden State Stimulus II initiative. Residents who live in an area with zip code ending in 928-999 will have their stimulus check mailed up until January 11th. So California is still sending out their stimulus checks. I've seen people say they haven't got theirs yet. They're still mailing these out, millions of them, actually. Um, Californians should receive their check no later than February 1st. Paper checks can take up to two to three weeks to arrive after they have been posted. At least nine people, at least nine people million, yeah, they misprinted that, are expected to receive a state stimulus check before the end of the year. Americans in Maine are receiving stimulus checks as well uh, since November 15th and uh, $285 checks. Taxpayers in Indiana will receive a cash boost of $125 when tax returns are filed next year as well. State law requires officials to hand taxpayers a refund if state reserves total more than 12.5% of the general funding pot. Yeah, so Indiana is sending out $125 um, on tax returns as well. I recently reported that here recent, uh, recently. Indiana governor said, quote, despite a pandemic, Indiana exceeded all expectations and closed the state fiscal year with, with an unprecedented amount of reserve. So uh, Indiana is sending out a $125 stimulus check as well. And we'll work with around 910,000 low-income Americans that pay taxes but submit a but submit tax returns. So I will keep you up to date as more and more states kind of give back to their residents here going forward, as well as the federal stimulus payments, federal stimulus programs, and the federal stimulus um, packages here going forward as well. So make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't yet so you don't miss out on new videos. Literally just click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on new videos that come out here on our channel every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can click here to watch our newest video next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.